Hello, fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today to bring you along on my storage journey. So uh, I'm just going to give you a little brief intro here, and then we will jump right in. Some of this is going to be a little repetitive, and I apologize for that, but that's because it was filmed over a, the course of several weeks. And I kind of wanted to take you all the way from start to finish so you could see the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and everything in between. So, yeah, let's get started. So, guys, here's the first fail. Actually, I guess technically this is the second. I tried to use, in the first attempt, scrapbook paper that I use spray adhesive to attach to the top of the box didn't work. So this time I tried to do a decoupage method and it isn't dry yet, but didn't work again. Would have been cool, but the paper, I don't know if I used too much glue. The paper wasn't made for this. I don't know. Didn't work. Isn't what I wanted. So sayonara to box number two. And I'm back to the drawing board to figure out what I want to do for my new storage system. Wish me luck. Okay, guys, I'm going to call this uh, trial a success. Um, it's still not exactly what I want. And my second attempt at making my own um, kind of storage boxes is hidden underneath this one. But... Basically what I did was just take my box and wrap it in wrapping paper with some double-sided tape. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Sorry if the camera is a bit wobbly. I'm trying to hold this while I show you guys kind of what I did. So I just have a plain storage box and I just wrapped it in wrapping paper. And you can see, you know, I just kind of double-sided taped it. It's not perfect. I didn't have enough to do what I wanted. This was a scrap piece of paper, but it's enough to show me that it will work and do what I want, which is I didn't like their shiny gold boxes, which were all I was able to find that were the size that I wanted so that I could fit all of my squares in one and all of my rounds in one for my spare drill storage. So finding boxes that are big enough for that is really more difficult than you would think because I wanted these kind of paper mache paperboard boxes. So what I really would have wanted was boxes the size, well, boxes like what I'm using, the photo box storage, but bigger and no one makes them in bigger sizes because those photo boxes are meant to store basically four by six photos. And so finding anything that was bigger that wasn't plastic was near impossible. Okay guys, so I'm back. Um, I am still trying to figure out what I want to do with my extra storage. And I'm in the process of kind of revamping the whole thing. I told you that I had bought new boxes, um, of which this is one. I bought new bags. I bought new cardstock. I bought new dividers. So I'm, I'm literally kind of revamping this from the ground up. So these boxes that I bought, if you can see here, have this metallic gold wrapping on the outside. Now, the thing with these boxes is they are nesting boxes that I got at Hobby Lobby. This is, so there's a set of them. And this is the largest one. So you can buy these online. However, uh, you can't buy just the largest box online. If you buy them online, you have to spend 30 some dollars for the whole set and I only wanted one box. So it necessitated another trip into town because this box, the lid has already been tossed. It was sacrificed in my first attempt. This is attempt, what you're looking at is attempt number three or four. 
And um, this one is also going to get sacrificed because I still have a couple of things I want to try before I make a final decision on how I'm going to do this. I don't want to keep the metallic gold. I don't like the way it looks. It's too reflective. It doesn't film well. It causes all kinds of issues with lighting. So I want to cover it up. Plus, I mean, the basic thing is I just don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. So, but the box is nice and big. And so the plan is that I will have all of my square spares in one box and all of my round squares spares in one box. And then I just have two boxes to deal with instead of the six that I'm currently doing. So my thought is, I'm again, kind of revamping everything. So let me just, well, let me do this and then I'll grab some other stuff so I can kind of show you the plan. So after kind of trying the decoupage thing, that was a complete fail. Um, then I thought I would go with some stickers that would have been okay, but then I was like, well, but then I really need to seal it and it's going to be uneven and that isn't what I wanted either. And so I thought, okay, let me just try wrapping paper and see how that works. And it worked okay. I used wrapping paper and some double-sided tape and it wasn't terrible. Um, it's not sticking the way it should. You can see here on this edge, it keeps peeling up. So I'm actually going to be peeling this this paper off so I can show you what my next plan is. But um, my thought was to use like adhesive spray. I bought some spray glue that shoots out like an aerosol. Um, however, it was, I don't know if it's because it's cold here right now, if I didn't shake it up enough, but it came out really patchy and just did not work well. Um, so I decided against that. And then I was going to use rubber cement because I thought maybe that would be okay. Um, I can't, I didn't look at Hobby Lobby when we went there, but I didn't, just looking at like Target and Walmart, I couldn't find anybody that even carries rubber cement anymore. I did find it on Amazon, but I refused to pay $10 for a bottle of something that should be like two bucks. So forget it. So then my husband and I were talking about it and, you know, we, I plan on doing the wrapping paper. I actually bought some wrapping paper. I thought this was really pretty. Um, and I was going to use this. However, I really like the rainbow of it. And then I realized, you know, because of the size of the roll of wrapping paper, it wasn't going to kind of work out the way that I wanted. Plus when you have a design like this, making it work on the box without making it look weird is also difficult. So I'm not quite sure how I want to accomplish that. But anyway, I, after talking over some other options with my husband, we decided that I wasn't going to do this. This is just going to get used as wrapping paper. So I abandoned that idea. And then we got to talking and I thought, well, what I, what I really need is some paper that's adhesive already. And so I thought, oh, shelf paper, that's what I'll do. Because shelf paper is already adhesive. It should stick fairly well. I mean, the, the box itself is really pretty, you know, smooth where the gold is and everything. And I'm just going to be wrapping it hopefully more neatly than this. This was just an experiment um, around the box. So I, what I'm going to be doing is I cut a piece. It's not quite... Well, if I do it this way, it doesn't fit all the way up the sides, which would be okay. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is wrap it like this. Now it won't fit the sides this way. It won't wrap around these sides, but I think what I'm going to plan to do is cover the bottom as completely as I can. And then, you know, whatever will wrap up the sides and then I will go around the edges with a smaller piece all around the four edges to kind of cover up, you know, whatever overlap there ends up being. And then I will have the pieces that, you know, kind of also overlap to the inside so that the whole box is covered. And then I'll need to do the same thing with the lid. Um, so 
and I have tried this out with several things. Um, but this is what I settled on. So I'm going to do that. Let me go grab some stuff because I'm going to show you some of the changes I'm making from what I currently have. So don't go anywhere. Okay. So what I've currently have is just these standard size photo boxes with dividers, foam dividers in them. And then I have all of these here. So what I was originally using was these two by three, four mil bags. You can get these on Amazon and I'll put links in the description below to all of the stuff that I'm talking about here. But I made round stickers for the round ones. I made square stickers for the square drills. And then I have round and square ABs. So I have four bags for each one. So once I move them into the two boxes, it will just be rounds in one and squares in the other. So they won't all four be together. So I won't need as many boxes. Now I went up from, these are two by three. I bought two and a half by three, which doesn't sound a whole lot bigger, but when you put them side by side, it, they are quite a bit bigger. And these are sold as two by three, but that three only includes this section. It doesn't include this. So these are actually more like almost four tall because the divider cards are four inches tall. So they're not quite four, but almost with the extra from the top. Now, so I bought those. The divider cards, I'm not going to use this blue color anymore. I don't think I think I'm going to use a different color, but I just bought a package of cardstock. That's all this is. And I cut these by hand, but I'm making new ones and I want them to have a tab so that it's a little easier to see because what I find with this method, with it just cut straight across, while it's easier and less fussy to just have rectangles um, for everything, I, I be, once you get them full, it's kind of hard to see the numbers sometimes. So what I'm going to do is have ones that maybe are a little bit taller so that I can see the numbers on the dividers better. So there'll be a tab this way and a tab coming this way, and then they'll alternate. So that also should help with the visibility. And they'll be bigger, of course, because they have to be slightly bigger than the size of the bags. So hopefully I have done my math correctly and I've got the sizes all figured out so that I'm wasting the least amount of space in these boxes. And instead of these kind of cheapy foam dividers, what I'm going to be doing, let me get all of this put back away before I lose anything. What I'm going to be doing is using these which I also bought on Amazon. And these are just kitchen drawer dividers. And uh, I haven't opened this yet, so let me figure out how to do that. Okay, I had to destroy the box to get them out. So it was put together really well. So these are more sturdy than the foam board. You can see they don't flex very well, but you can cut them. Um, they're just like a really hard kind of foam core. So the inside I think is foam, um, but then it's got a more rigid outer layer. So you're supposed to be just able to cut these with like a box knife or something. So I, I will have to cut them down to fit in the box, of course, but they'll be much more sturdy and still leave me enough room that I can kind of get my hands in there and do what I need to do and still have plenty of room. And they're about the same size, the same thickness as the foam board, but just prettier and um, much more useful for what I want. And there's, I'm going to have five for each. You get 10 of them. So I'm going to have five for each box. And I think I'm only going to need four. So we'll see how that goes. No, I should need five, five or six. So it depends on how much I have to cut them down. I thought I had it figured out so that I'll have enough that I need, but with the way that I have to cut them, I actually may end up having to buy another set to have enough for what I want to do, but we'll see. If I have five, I think I'm gonna have six rows. So that might be enough. 
because I thought I had it all figured out. But you know, math is not my strong suit, so we'll see. So that's the plan is to use the bigger box or the bigger bags with the larger tabbed dividers. Use these as the boundaries for each row because I'm going to have, of course, because this box is bigger, I'm going to have more rows. Um, and hopefully I can fit all of the colors and all of the squares in one box and all of the rounds in another box. And then instead of, like I said, these five boxes that I've got going on or six boxes I've got going on, I will be down to two. Now they will be bigger and they will be heavier, of course, but for me, I think it'll be much more manageable and much more what I want. So that's the plan. Um, I'll be back when I have some stickers and dividers and things to show you. I'm going to do some experimenting with the contact paper. I will come back that and show you guys that and how it turned out as well. So catch you in a okay, bit. So I'm trying to see how the contact paper will work. This is supposed to be removable contact paper. It's going down pretty smooth so far and I've gotten out one of my brayers to kind of help me push it down so that it's adhered well. And it does just have a tiny bit of overlap. And there are some air bubbles because you can see some of the stickers and things that I was just trying out um, are underneath there. But if I peel this back, it actually does come up. Some of the ink is sticking, but other than that, it actually does come up and I can lay it down and kind of smooth out any wrinkles that are happening. So I actually think this method is going to work. It's going to be a little bit tricky in that I have to figure out exactly kind of how to lay this out. Um, I was going to get something with a pattern because I think that looks the best, but I'm now kind of rethinking that because that just makes it all the harder to match up. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there. If I want to do something that looks more like the contact paper you can get in all kinds of fun patterns and things. And I was actually looking at one that was kind of look like broke wallpaper um, with some like very kind of vintage looking feel to it because that's just the aesthetic that I like. But Again, I think that pattern is going to make it hard to match. Um, so I may get something with either like a, I mean, this is a sort of seamless pattern, but if I get anything on at an angle because it doesn't cover all the way, yeah, I'm just thinking about how I'm going to have to cut this because of course, contact paper, I'm limited to, it only comes in a certain width and no larger than that because it's made to go on shelves. So I may have to do some kind of looking around and see if I can find the size that I need for what I want or if I just need to cut it. This is gonna be the bottom after all. So if I like rotated this pattern and cut a piece here and a piece here, no one's ever really gonna see the bottom. And then I can, you know, do something It'll be easier to do the sides because I'll be working with a smaller area. And then I just really need to kind of figure out how to do the corners. Okay guys, just another update on where I'm at with uh, designing and coming up with my new storage idea. So I told you I wanted to cover the box with contact paper. So this is my, I don't know, fourth attempt I think. And it looks a little weird. The patterns don't match, I know, because I was trying some things. So uh, we did get the box completely wrapped. It's not perfect, but um, the contact paper did work and it's gonna be exactly what I want. So I'm stoked about that. Um, it is removable. So if I decide at some point down the road that I don't like it, I can always switch it out for something else, which is amazing too. So, I just bought some cheap contact paper at Target that had a design on it because we wanted to see how hard it would be to kind of match up the design. And in the course of wrapping this one, we figured out that we wanted to do it diff different ways. So basically we cut one long strip to go around all of the edges so that the pattern would match. Um, 
and ended up with just this little seam right here at the edge. And then I had put this, the um, big piece on the bottom and then we wrapped over that. And then after we got done, I decided that I didn't like that because I don't like the way it looks, you know, wrapping over what's all over here. So we decided we would put the side pieces on first, get all of those wrapped, make sure our pattern matched, and then we would cover up on the bottom and just kind of, you know, get close to the edge here. So you can see this one hangs over a little bit, but you can also see this is pretty easy to just pick up and pull. And then, you know, you've got whatever's underneath. So um, of course this was a, just a test piece, so I didn't have it all the way, but so on the final product, it'll be, I'll have a seam on the edge like this does here. Hopefully you can see that. And that will be just a big piece that goes all the way around to cover up all of these edges here where it wraps over from the side. So pretty stoked about that and can't wait. Um, the other prep that I did was to get prepped I, uh, my stickers. I originally had intended to just reuse the stickers from my current bags, just pull them off the bags and put them on my new bag since my new bags are bigger. And then I decided, you know, I just don't want to go to all that trouble. The stickers may not stick as great on the new bag. So I'm just going to cut all new stickers. So I spent basically an afternoon cutting out all new stickers. So what I've decided to do is that my round stickers or my round drills are going to go in one box because I bought two boxes going to go in one box and they're going to be blue. So my stickers will be blue. My dividers will be blue. The DMC stickers for that will be blue. My square drills, the stickers will be pink. The divider cards will be pink. All of the um, DMC stickers for that will be pink. So I have my pink stickers for the bags. I have my blue stickers for the bags. So again, round and square. And then I have cut all of my DMC um, stickers for the divider cards. And again, those are gonna be in pink for square and blue for round. So I am currently waiting for my cardstock to get here. I am going to be using my cutting machine to cut um, all of the pieces, the divider cards. I wanted to, was going to cut them by hand, but really the only way to do that and make them look good is if you make them square or rectangular and just do straight cuts. There's really no, no reliable way to hand cut tab dividers. And I couldn't find any pre-made ones for the size that I wanted or a size that I could cut down easily to what I wanted. So I'm going to be using my cutting machine to cut those out once my cardstock gets here. And um, then I will be ready to start assembling everything and transferring over the drills from my original storage small boxes and put them in the large boxes. So uh, let me show you what my husband and I did. So after I got my new contact paper, uh, which I just, of course, ordered from Amazon, it's just, you know, contact paper like you would buy to, to cover your shelves or whatever at your house. It is removable like the other one. I bought a pattern that I liked and ta-da, my shiny gold box that started out life like this. And I'll stick a picture over there of the shiny gold box that I can't stand but it was the size that I wanted. And we have completely wrapped it in all of the contact paper inside and outside so that I can use it. And it worked amazingly. We were able to cut all of the uh, top, the, the piece for the lid in one piece, and then just, you know, make cuts to for the corners and things and wrap it around. So, uh, and a little trick that my husband discovered, you do get some air bubbles and I'm kind of going to let these sit and then I'm going to go back 
over it because of course the top is not completely smooth. Um, but you can just use a little needle and put a pin prick in wherever there's an air bubble and then just smooth it out with your fingers and it will disappear. I have a few left, but I'm not bothered enough about them to, to go back and mess with them. And then on the uh, bottom part of the box, we did all of the sides, like I said, first. So we cut one long skinny piece and wrapped all four of the sides first. And wrap that around the insides. So these are all from the side piece that we wrapped up and over. And there's a few wrinkles and things, but I'm not bothered about those because once I get my dividers in here and I get my um, drills and the cardstock and all that in here, you're not going to see any of that anyway, so it's fine. So we did that. And then on the bottom, we did, like I said, we cut one long piece, one big piece, and then because we had wrapped the overlap from the sides, you can now see we've got these little seams right here, but I think it looks amazing. I'm so super stoked about that. So this is gonna be the box that I put my spare drills in, and let me grab a couple of these pieces here. So this is what I'm going to be using as dividers. I showed you guys these. These are made for either like clothing drawers or silverware drawers or whatever. They're very sturdy. There's not a lot of flex to them at all. Um, but they are really just kind of foam board. And so I had my husband cut them down because they were too long to fit in here. And so now I have my little dividers. Now, the only thing I haven't really decided, and the reason I'm still hanging on to these little pieces, is because these things are made so that you slot them together like this, and then you have, you know, more compartments or whatever, because again, it's made for like silverware, utensils, clothing, whatever. Um, and so I haven't decided what I want to do. Putting them these little extra pieces on does make it a little bit sturdier rather than just kind of standing them up in here because there is a little bit of playroom back and forth for these. Um, but I don't know if I want to do that yet. If I do, I will likely have my husband cut them again so that I just have one little section like this whole piece will disappear and it will just be like this. In addition, they sit a little bit better if I put them like this, but my original intention had been for these to be the little slots to be face up. So I haven't quite decided about that yet either. So that's going to be kind of a play by ear thing as I start putting things together. So I'm most of the way there towards getting everything set up. Uh, we have this box wrapped. I have all the dividers cut. Now I'm waiting on my card stock is really the last piece of it. All my stickers are ready to go. So once I get my divider cards cut, I can start basically getting all of the stickers and divider tabs ready to go. And then I can start moving drills. Um, we still need to wrap the other box. My husband hasn't cut the rest of these yet because I wasn't sure kind of how I was going to do this. I want to get one box kind of completely set up before I make a final decision on that. But so far, it's looking like it's going to turn out pretty amazing. So I'm pretty stoked. So stay tuned. Uh, once I get my cardstock, I will be back to kind of show you guys how it goes. And we'll see how I did. See you in a few. Okay, guys, so I'm back. And I'm going to just kind of go through the whole thing again from start to finish and show you what I've done. So this is my new storage system. What I did was... I made myself tabbed index divider cards. I purchased new bags. So I went from two by three bags to two and a half by three bags, which doesn't sound like a whole lot of difference, but it actually is quite a bit uh, when you're talking about room. Because I was using six different boxes of my original storage system, and it was just getting too unwieldy. And someone did suggest to me that I um, change over and instead of keeping them all in one place that I put squares in three boxes and rounds in three boxes so that I didn't have as many to go through every time I wanted to decat. 
which was genius, and I should have done that from the start. However, I had already kind of started this whole process, and I just thought, you know, I really want to get it down to as few boxes as possible. So I went out and tried to find some bigger boxes, which I did. And I said, okay, I measured everything and tried to figure out how big did I need to make my divider cards. Um, I printed out all of the DMC numbers because I decided to keep my squares and rounds separate. So I had two boxes, blue for my rounds with all the DMC stickers to go on the tab dividers and pink for the squares again to go on all of the tab dividers. Now I made some that were, you know, by numbers and whatever. I opted not to use those, but I wasn't sure whether or not I would be sharing this with you guys. And so I decided I would go ahead and just do some setting up so that if at some point I decide to share and or put them out for sale somewhere, um, I already had a bunch of work already done. So um, I am just storing my square, regular, and ABs in one box. And then I have my round, regular, and ABs in a separate box. And I will show you those. So here's my little index card where I went through and just kind of tried to figure out how did I want to orient the divider cards in the new box, what, how, what size did I need to make them to get the most use out of the box, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's what I did. I made my calculations. I printed out all my stickers. I cut all of my tab dividers with these are just cardstock, but I used my cutting machine to cut them out because I could not find any pre-cut bulk of the size that I needed because I wanted to, I wanted a specific size and it just isn't one that's generically available. If you want to do something that is three by five or whatever, you know, then you have more options because those are kind of standard sizes but I wanted to use something that wasn't standard. And so I ended up having to cut a bunch of this stuff out myself because you can't purchase it anywhere. So what I did was I went from a box this size to a box this size. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but so this box is essentially, it is longer than this box. It is almost two and a half times wider than this box. And so because of that, I was able to fit much more in there. So then began the very long process of putting all of the stickers on all of the divider tabs that I had cut. Uh, and then the process of putting all, because I decided to, rather than transfer the stickers, my original intention had been to transfer stickers from my old system to my new, but because I opted to do different colors for round and square, that wasn't going to work. So I had to reprint DMC numbers for all the bags for both regular and ABs in blue for rounds and in pink for squares. So, and then I initially had some very large dividers, which you guys saw previously. And when I started putting them together, they did not work. They took up too much room. I had forgotten to accommodate how much room the dividers were going to take. And so I went back and I found some much thinner ones. They're only a tenth of an inch thick and that worked out much better. Plus these were much easier. You just snap them and break them where you need them to be. And that ended up working out much better to use as dividers. And here, is what my finished storage looks like. These are blue, so these are rounds, obviously. And I have put um, little green boats at the beginnings and mostly the ends. I missed one right here, so let me grab one of those while I'm thinking about it. Uh, just to kind of hold them upright. They're not really necessary, but it just makes it a little bit neater. So you can see here, and you can see here on this end, I've got a lot of room in there. So um, quite a bit of play in here because I forgot something very important and I will show you that when I show you the uh, squares. So this is all of my round drills. 
starting with 150 all the way to 5200 and I've got all of my round drills in here as well as a bag for the AB drills if I have any ABs. So this is completely done and finished. We got the contact paper to wrap it up to cover up the hideous gold that I did not like. Um, it's not perfect. You can still see some corners and edges. There are still some bubbles and things I need to work out, but it's much better than the hideous gold that I had going on, so I'm happy with it. Now I can already see I've got some little scratches there from other boxes sitting on top of it. That's just how it's going to be. I do have leftover contact paper, so at some point if it gets too messed up and I need to take it off, then I can do that. So yeah, so there is my round. Now, don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you my square, but I need to switch everything out because these are so big. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here is my box of squares. It looks exactly the same. I use the same contact paper. It's the same setup and everything. And here is the box of squares. Now, you might notice it's a lot more full than the box of rounds. And the reason for that, and I forgot a box, a green boat back there too. The reason for that is because once upon a time, I ordered a big box of Art Dot Square Spares. You might remember that. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to that playlist so you can go check it out. Because what I was thinking was I would do my Heaven and Earth designs with squares. And so I bought the kit that gave me a thousand drills of every single color, pretty much, of um, square drills. And then I put them in there. So while I managed to get all of my drills to fit in one box for my rounds, I did not manage that with my squares because I had so many more squares. So I'm currently really glad that I did not purchase the um, round art dot spares, which I had planned to do, but hadn't done yet. And I'm glad that I didn't because I didn't have enough to get them all in this one box. And I certainly wouldn't have had enough room to get them all um, in one box for the rounds if I had done the same thing. Because I didn't, I managed to with that one. This one only goes up to 3340. That's as much as I could fit in one box. However, I will say I'm super stoked with how it turned out. I alternated. Well, what I did was when I cut my tab divider cards, I cut them all the same, but then I just flipped them. So I have one on the left and one on the right. So as you're looking at it, you can see um, very clearly all of the DMC numbers. So you can find what you're looking for pretty quickly. Now, I did make several mistakes and got, you know, halfway through some numbers and went, whoops, that was supposed to be on the right. And I put it on the left or vice versa. So, but I did manage to get it all done. So then when I realized that I wasn't going to put everything, be able to fit everything for the squares in one box, I had to suddenly rethink what I was going to do. So in the process of trying to find a bigger box of store to use for this, my spare drill storage, I had bought another box from Joann's thinking that I would be able to get most of either all of the rounds or all of the squares in there. It didn't turn out that way. And so I originally had been going to junk that box as well, but I still had it floating around. So I decided to keep it and I will be back to show you in just a minute what I did with that. Don't go anywhere. Okay. So here is the box that I bought from Joann's thinking that I would be able to get all of my squares or all of my rounds in it. It didn't work out that way, but because I had it left over, I decided that I would go ahead and use it. So here's what I'm using it for now. These are all of the squares that I could not fit in the initial big box. So as you can see, they're all in here and I still have room to expand if I need to do that. So I'm thinking at some point, if I need to expand the number of rounds or whatever, um, or the number of squares, I can do that. I don't see that I'm going to be 
expanding the number, number of squares space that I need, given that I have already purchased all the art dot spares, and I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon for the round, so I think I'll be okay for a while. So even though my goal was to get down to two boxes, I did manage two and a half, so I'm happy with that. I've gone from six to two and a half. And even though the boxes are larger, I think they're much more manageable for me. And because I kind of have all of the squares and all the rounds together, now when I want to go pull some stuff, uh, I know I only need to pull out basically one box, maybe two, instead of five or six. So, and because I had some space left over, I took my spacers and I put them in here. These are my glow-in-the-dark drills. I originally had intended to kind of go back in and put them in where they belonged, but I thought, you know, it was just easier for me to put them in here. That way I know those are all glow-in-the-dark and I don't get confused and I don't need to make any more bags or anything to go in these numbers. These are strictly regulars, either square or round and AB square or rounds. Now, I do have some special ABs in here. These are rounds, so it may seem a little weird to put them in my square box, but these are a bunch of diamond dots, um, ABs that I bought. So um, because I'm kind of putting all of my special drills in here, so I've got my glow in the dark, I've got my ABs, including a metallic that I'm gonna find a use for at some point. And then I've got my jelly glow drills that I have never used. So at some point I'm gonna be finding a use for those as well. So I have all of those in there. I think I need to do something with my specials as well. My crystal rhinestones are all in little tic-tac containers and organized on like a spice rack. So those are gonna stay where they are. My special drills are just kind of laying around separated by color in various um, baggies. So what I might do is move these over here or over here, and then in this back section, put in all of my special drills that are currently separated by color. So I kind of have everything all together instead of laying around in 15 different places, which is how it's been up to this point. So. I am gonna have to do some rearranging of my shelf space because this box was not one that I was anticipating needing. But I have to say, I'm actually super happy with all the, with the way this all turned out. I really like how my index cards turned, or my divider cards turned out. I love the little stickers. I don't know how well you can see. I put the DMC number on it and there's like kind of a background of diamonds on it. So, and I, I love how they alternate. So I've got them, you know, very clearly marked so I can see what's what. And I just think this is gonna make my life when I'm kidding down and possibly kidding up for my heaven and earth de designs so much easier. So yeah, there is my spare storage. And uh, I don't know. Hmm, I don't really have anything I can link to because I kind of did all of this myself. If you're interested in stickers for your storage, I do have already out in my shared folder for you guys um, some plainer stickers than what is here. These I specifically made to kind of be that weird shape uh, to fit on the tab dividers that I made for myself. Um, but I do have some that you can go out there and print for yourself that you can cut. So if all you have is like a, a paper cutter, um, it's just straight cuts. They're just rectangular with all the DMC numbers. These, because I was using this particular kind of tab divider, I made these stickers specifically and cut them out with my cutting machine as well. So, uh, yeah, that's it guys. That's my spare storage journey. So I hope you found this interesting and or informative. If you like this video before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. Give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.